Hey guys, this is Gage and Matt with ShirtCycle. Today we're going to talk about creating your company logo. So this is something that's supposed to be a lot of fun, but for a lot of startups it ends up being a rabbit hole. And as we know, rabbit holes are the curse of startups because time is your most limited resource. So I am on my second logo for both businesses. And you know what I've learned is that while I'm not a logo designer, you know I'm the one that best knows what my logo should look like. Okay, so you mentioned you're on your second logo for both companies. Yep. What did you do to create that? Yeah, so what I did differently than the first time was I just designed in PowerPoint and then I had a freelancer bring it to life. And you know, the first time you use 99designs, which is a company that you can you know, give some input as far as what you're looking for and then crowdsource your logo. And you'll get a bunch of bids and designs from all over the world and while that's great, it can easily overwhelm you and kind of take you off course. And the fact of the matter is that you know, an overseas designer doesn't know your audience like you do. And they just may be fitting your logo into their kind of design template. So again, you know, while that's a great idea and a great concept as far as 99designs, something as critical as your logo, I don't think is something that can be outsourced, or at least in my opinion. No, I agree. So what makes a great logo? Recognizability, you know, and in other words, just simplicity. So can someone recognize your logo from 50 yards away? And, you know, step two is trying to figure out, can you bring in imagery so such as something about your company or your industry that helps someone understand I recognize this company and it's part of this field be it healthcare sports etc and you know you can look at logo guessing games like Sporkle and stuff like that to get an idea of which logos you are remembering and then maybe take elements from that into your own logo design another thing real quick is just make sure that your logo works as well in black and white as it does with color because you may not be able to use all those colors every time that makes sense now what about dimensions and shape does that play a factor for sure so that's a great question things have kind of changed a lot there so I mean, if you think of Coca-Cola, it's kind of like a long name. Now, so many logos are squares because that's what goes on to social media. And social media may be the first time for a lot of us that your brand is seen. And again, it could be on a phone and very small. So you want it to be something that's recognizable, identifiable. So when you are designing, you know, we talk about mobile first design for building your website. You should almost have a square first design for building your logo and definitely build your square logo. I'm sorry, design your square logo and your rectangle logo at, at the same time. Um, you know, other things, for example, I have a Connect Lax logo and what we do is have the icon as a standalone square and also in our rectangle logo. And, you know, we have kind of an outline of a lacrosse stick in there. So it has some good imagery there. And then we also have our C and an L you know, interwoven in a way that looks kind of like a baseball hat for a baseball team and it kind of conveys sports. So again, those things are important. You know, with fashion, you see a lot of just straight names like Shirt Cycle, it's just, we don't have an icon. What we do is take our name, kind of shrink it down to fit into a box and it just makes it a little bit less recognizable. That makes sense. So how does, how does one person can, how does somebody create that great logo? It's great. I mean, it's an important process. I mean, a, it's kind of sentimental, so definitely try to have everyone on your team be a part of it. Um, also, just try to create a simple logo yourself, you know, pen and paper, PowerPoint. You can always have a freelancer bring it to life. And again, don't worry about if you post something and you know, a competitor sees what you're thinking about with your logo design. It, it really doesn't matter. Is there anything else to consider? Yeah, last thing is color. You know, I don't put a lot of weight in this, but you know, psychologists do. So for example, blue means trust and green means growth. So those kind of color choices may mean a lot for your business. Like if you're creating a security company, you may want to do blue. And I think ADT uses blue, right? Mm -hmm. Because that conveys trust. Um, so again, the big difference between my first and second logo designs was just how I approached it. You know, I focus on simplicity. I kind of designed it myself and then had a a web designer, you know, bring it to life, um, or logo designer, sorry. And then I avoid kind of the cutesy things that while I understood what they meant, you know, I kind of assume my audience did and that's not really a good thing to do. So, you know, when you are building your logo design, focus on the KISS scenario, which is keep it simple, stupid. You know, when you have the right logo, you'll kind of know, but make sure you test it out with people, get feedback, because obviously changing your logo down the road can, you know, affect your branding and you don't want to do that. Um, so again, with logos, you know, don't just kind of export it or outsource it. You know, try to make it something that you do with your team. Make sure everyone feels like they're a part of it. And ultimately, you know, you know, as the person with the vision of the business, what your logo should look like and what you want it to convey. And then just focus on having, you know, a designer bring that to life. Makes sense. Thank cool. you. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks.